Hello, and welcome to today's video tutorial. My name is Maria. I'm the VP of Sales for the Midwest region at Innovative Research. In this instructional video, I'll guide you through the steps to effectively utilize Innovative Research's popular human IgG ELISA kit, designed for the precise and quantitative determination of total human IgG antigen. Let's get started. First, let's review what's inside the kit. The kit instructions, product certificate of analysis, 96 well antibody coated micro titer strip plate, a 10x wash buffer, human IgG standard, anti human IgG primary antibody, horseradish peroxidase conjugated streptadivin, TMB substrate solution. Before starting, ensure you have your safety equipment on and all additional required reagents and equipment mentioned in the instructions at your lab station and ready to use. You'll need to prepare the reagents according to the provided instructions. Prepare a TBS buffer and blocking buffer. Dilute the 10x wash buffer to obtain a 1x wash buffer. Please note that this assay measures total human IgG antigen in the 0.2 to 200 nanogram per milliliter range. If the unknown is thought to have IgG levels greater than 200 nanograms per milliliter, dilutions may be made in blocking buffer before use. A 1 to 1 million to 1 to 5 million dilution for normal human plasma is suggested for best results. I have my plasma sample here, but if you didn't, you would want to collect plasma using EDTA or citrate as the anticoagulant. Then, centrifuge the sample for 15 minutes at 1000 XG within 30 minutes of collection. Once complete, either immediately start the assay at room temperature or store the sample at negative 20 degrees Celsius, avoiding repeated freeze-thaw cycles. Next, we'll prepare the standard. Reconstitute the human IgG standard by adding blocking buffer and mix well. Then, prepare the dilutions according to the provided table. Be aware that dilutions for the standard curve and zero standard must be made and applied to the plate immediately. There is an example plate layout located in the instructions. You may notice that we recommend using a horizontal table layout instead of a typical column-based layout. This is to increase precision and decrease the likelihood of human error while preparing the standard. Carefully add the standards and unknown samples to the designated wells of the microtiter plate. Make sure that when performing the assay, you vigorously shake the plate at 300 RPM at each step of the protocol. Ensure that you shake the plate for 30 minutes. Then wash wells three times with 300 microliter wash buffer. Remove excess wash by gently tapping the plate on a paper towel or Kim wipe. After washing the plate, reconstitute the primary antibody by adding 10 milliliters of blocking buffer directly to the vial and agitate gently to completely dissolve the contents. Add 100 microliters of this dilution to all wells. Then shake the plate at 300 RPMs for 30 minutes and wash the wells as you did in the previous step. Now, it's time for the streptadivin HRP edition. Briefly centrifuge file before opening. Dilute 2.5 microliters of HRP conjugated streptadivin to 2.5 milliliters of the blocking buffer to generate a 1 to 1,000 dilution. Add 0.1 milliliters of the 1 to 1,000 dilution to get 9.9 .9 milliliters of blocking buffer to generate a 1 100,000 dilution. Add 100 microliters of the 1 to 100,000 dilution to all wells. Finally, as with the previous steps, shake the plate at 300 RPM for 30 minutes and wash the wells three times with wash buffer. Add the TMB substrate to all wells and shake the plate for proper incubation. Note that the substrate will change from colorless to different strengths of blue. The incubation time for this step should be between two to 10 minutes, as is noted in the instructions. Watch the plate for color development. 
Once the color develops, quench the reaction by adding HCl stop solution to all wells when samples are visually in the same range as the standards. Be sure to add stop solution to the wells in the same order as substrate upon which color will change from blue to yellow. Now it's time to measure the absorbance of each well at 450 nanometers using a microplate reader. Subtract the zero point from all standards and unknowns to determine the correct absorbance. Analyze the data by plotting the absorbance against the concentration of IgG in the standards. Fit a straight line through the linear points of the standard curve using a linear fit procedure if unknowns appear on the linear portion of the standard curve. Alternatively, you can use software for a four-parameter logistics curve fit. The amount of IgG in the unknowns can be determined from this curve. If samples have been diluted, the calculated concentration must be multiplied by the dilution factor. Based on the standard curve, you can determine the concentration of IgG in your unknown samples. As a reference, the concentration of IgG in normal human serum ranges from 5 to 12 milligrams per milliliter. Remember to take all precautions and handle the reagents carefully. With proper execution, you can achieve accurate and reliable results using Innovative Research's Human IgG ELISA kit. Thanks for watching today's tutorial.